The flu continues to take lives. An explosion sends an Oklahoman to the hospital, and a Norman star stays home. This is OU Nightly. It's no secret that a budget shortfall is a pressing issue at the state capitol. And now state health, health officials say the state health lab could be in jeopardy. As our Nate Payne reports, without more revenue, the state's health lab could be in trouble. Oklahoma will continue to struggle if we don't fix our structural deficits in our budget. It was one of the hottest topics of Congress's first week. The state has a $900 million budget shortfall, and legislators on both sides of the aisle are looking for ways to create more revenue. Representative Jason Dunnington, a Democrat, has written a tax reform that bill. We can't have high-quality schools, and we don't have um, quality infrastructure or health care or public safety without appropriately funding these things and we haven't been appropriately funding these things. The bill would raise income taxes on the state's wealthiest people by 1%, end the capital gains tax exemption, and close a loophole that allows corporations to pay taxes in other states. And Dunnington says it would create $500 million in government revenue. Water leaks, crammed storage space, and inconsistent operating temperatures are just some of the safety problems that face the state's 45-year-old health lab. Christy Bradley, the state's epidemiologist, says if the lab doesn't receive a $50 million bond over 20 years, it will be shut down. So every state tries to have an accredited public health laboratory. If we would need to outsource those specimens to another lab, it would cost at least twice as much uh, to the state to have to do that. The lab is the only place in the state that tests for rabies and drug-resistant strands of tuberculosis, responds to agents like anthrax and Ebola, and screens newborn babies for genetic disorders. While the governor has listed the lab as a top priority, they include a new Department of Health lab so we don't lose our national accreditation. And the bond has been approved by the Senate Appropriations Committee, it will be up to a state legislator that's strapped for cash to get the health department the money it has been requesting for almost a decade. Nate Fain, OU Nightly. Senator Kim David is the author of Senate Bill 236, which is moving through committees. If it passes, a $59 million bond will be issued for the construction of a new facility. And while the flu continues to take its toll on Oklahoma, the Oklahoma State Department of Health reports that since the season began in September, the flu has killed 28 Oklahomans. The report also revealed that more than 1,100 people have been hospitalized during the current season. OU physicians are reminding there is no need to panic. They say the best way to prevent the flu is to get vaccinated and to wash your hands. Another dubious distinction for the Sooner State, Oklahoma is number one in the number of children abused or neglect neglected by foster parents. The 2015 figures show 150 confirmed cases of abuse in Oklahoma. For comparison, that's 121 more cases than Texas, which has a population of 26 million people. An Oklahoma Human Services spokesperson says the number is just too high. Out-of-state monitors are helping, but the agency says there is still room for improvement. And tomorrow morning might sound a bit different around Norman Railroad crossings. That's because Norman will now be considered a quiet zone. That means trains will not sound their horns in town unless it's an emergency. The project has been in the works since 2015. Since then, the city has installed median barriers and warning signs to maintain safety. The project was developed during a time when Norman experienced several train-related deaths. A 15-year-old is in jail after being connected to the shooting of an adult male on the 300 block of North Cockrell Avenue. An initial investigation revealed that 15-year-old pulled out a gun and shot the man after being involved in an altercation. The victim has not been identified at this time, while the 15-year-old suspect is jailed on complaint of first-degree murder. And at least one person has been taken to the hospital after an explosion at an oil field in eastern Oklahoma. The explosion was the result of a head that blew off a gas well near Quinton, Oklahoma, about 100 miles southeast of Tulsa. Patrol was called in around 1230 this afternoon, and the state route that was closed after the explosion is now open. Well, Jason, 
Very nice day, much needed wave. It's been way too cold, way too rainy. The, past the drizzle days. was very uh, glad, very glad it's gone. Yeah, for real. Jordan, can you tell us if it's going to stick around? Yeah, so the warm-up is here to stay, at least for the weekend. All right, so right now it is clear, and there's not a hardly a single sky in the cloud. A single cloud in the sky in Oklahoma right now. Temperatures are warm, sitting inside the upper 60s, even sitting in the 70s in northwest Oklahoma. Coming up, we're talking about the warming can continue, and then our next chance for rain come this weekend, but winter is not done just yet. What does that mean? Coming up, back to you guys. Thanks, Jordan. Senators will vote tomorrow to decide if Oklahoma Attorney General Scott Pruitt will lead the Environmental Protection Agency. After several days of debate over the controversial nominee, the U.S. Senate has decided to stop talking and take a vote. Despite at least one Republican defector and opposition letters from 800 EPA employees, it appears Pruitt will be confirmed. Now, President Donald Trump held a news conference today to announce his new nominee for Labor Secretary. But as Kyle Payne shows us in the News Center, it turned into a whole lot more. Earlier today, President Trump summoned the media to announce his pick for Labor Secretary Alexander Acosta. If confirmed, Acosta will be the first Hispanic member of the president's cabinet. Trump's first choice, fast food exec Andrew Puzder withdrew his bid yesterday. Unlike Puzder, Acosta will take the helm with actual public service experience under his belt. And then the news conference got wild when the president opened up fresh wounds in his feud with the media. The press has become so dishonest that if we don't talk about it, we are doing a tremendous disservice to the American people. Tremendous disservice. We have to talk about it to find out what's going on, because the press honestly is out of control. The level of dishonesty is out of control. The president said news outlets continue to attack him because they disagree with his agenda. And then the president turned to Russia and his relationship, or lack thereof, with Russian leaders. Mr. Trump tried to make it clear that while he wants to establish a good relationship, Russia is not his friend. The greatest thing I could do is shoot that ship that's 30 miles offshore right out of the water. Everyone in this country is going to say, oh, it's so great. That's not great. That's not great. I would love to be able to get along with Russia. Trump also said that Russia is fake news and that any report of him or his aides being in contact with Russia is a lie. And Colin, despite all the chaos during his first month in office, Trump stated that his administration is running like a fine-tuned machine. Well, thank you, Kyle. Holden Cruzmark joins us now, and Holden, OU basketball received some of its biggest news since Blake Griffin announced that he was signing. What can you tell us? All right, well, Colin, Kentucky, Kansas, and Oklahoma State. Those were the three teams Norman North superstar point guard Trey Young turned down today. After a long process, Young announced that he would be attending the University of Oklahoma this fall. Per NCAA rules, OU is not allowed to talk about Trey signing until April, but thankfully, we're not the athletics department, so I get to tell you about it. As far as Young's decision, he couldn't think about playing anywhere else than what, he's, what he calls home, Norman. This is just home. This has always been home to me. Um, I was built relationships with a lot of coaches throughout the years. Uh, this recruiting process has been very long and very tough. Uh, like I said, I've built a lot of trust with all these coaches, and um, uh, this has just been home. This has been home. A really big day for OU basketball, Absolutely. and we'll have more coming about that in the D block. Wow. That's the kind of signing that turns your program around. I'm sure Alon Kruger is very excited. Thanks. Holden. I was like, I'm very excited. Yeah, me too. Huh? <laughs> Well, still to come on OU Nightly, using your cell phone in your car could cost you. And Oklahoma teachers finally received some good news. Stay with us. The first group of refugees have arrived in Tulsa. Among the group was 42-year-old Don Vung, who arrived Thursday with her three daughters and mother. She had planned to come to the United States for years to join her brother, but because of Donald Trump's executive order, her plans were put on hold. Thanks to the federal judge who blocked Trump's travel ban, Vung and 14 other refugees from Russia now have a chance at a new life. Well, the way you board your flight could be changing. Emily Akins joins us now on more how travelers will have to ID themselves in the government report. Emily? 
Yeah, the Oklahoma House of Representatives approved legislation today to bring Oklahoma licenses into compliance with the Federal Real ID Act. Oklahomans starting January 22nd, 2018 will have to show a form of identification that complies with the Real ID Act to TSA to board a commercial aircraft. Along with a driver's license, a passport and military ID are both still acceptable to get you on an airplane. And if you aren't a big traveler, Representative Leslie Osborne proposed a bill last week to allow some people to keep their old ID if that's more convenient for you. And Oklahoma legislators will also consider bills in the upcoming weeks that will prohibit the use of handheld cell phones while driving. Although texting and driving is already illegal, this ban would forbid cell phone use by drivers altogether. The bill is called the Bobby White Act of 2017, named after an Owasso teacher who recently lost her daughter to a distracted driving accident. The bill contains a $100 penalty for cell phone use while driving and $5,000 in construction and school zones. A Senate panel yesterday passed six bills that would increase Oklahoma teachers' pay. State officials say they expect to have $868 million less to spend in 2018, but, but say increasing teacher pay is a priority to them. The six bills include Senator David Holt's bill for a $10,000 raise over the next four years. The subcommittee also passed adding another $5,000 to the minimum teacher salary schedule. Senator J.J. Dossett says in relation to the failure of state question 779 in November, voters may have agreed to pay to the pay raise, but just disagreed with the tax. And you guys, these teachers, these teacher bills haven't been passed quite yet. We'll keep you updated in the, in, in the future on when teachers might actually see this money, but it is good news for them today. Yeah, really definitely. Good news. They Thank for, you for sure that. need it. Thank you, Emily. Well, it has been a beautiful day in Norman, but the question is, will this weather stay? Jordan? Yeah, we'll be talking about the timeline after the break. Welcome back to United. I'm Jordan over to and look at your weather. So here we've got some incredible video all the way from Maine. This is near the Portland area and you can see lots of snow. I mean, that's at least feet, at least a foot of snow. In fact, some locations in that area did see at least three feet of snow over there. And then other locations, especially Southwest Maine, also saw 16 inches of snow. And they've been seeing snow, they saw it last weekend, they saw it the weekend before. Snow everywhere and it's really starting to pile up. And there is from this morning. So there's the snow from this morning. This is a satellite radar for the past 12 hours. But the good news is that it's moved off. So there you can see it's kind of moved off. It was snowing this morning, but most of it's kind of moving off and hopefully I'll kind of get a break. But there's that system moving off. Now what we're keeping an eye on is a system way over here off the coast. And that's going to be coming in our direction for the weekend, which will bring us some rain. But for right now, high pressure is in control. And we have clear skies, not a single sky, a single cloud in the sky right now. But let's take a look at the temperatures across the entire area. And of course, it is very warm, 64 degrees in warm and 72 degrees in Wichita. But what's interesting is we go up to the north, 69 degrees in Rapid City right now. And their normal high for today is 39. So they are 30 degrees above normal for this time of year. So it is very warm all across the central U.S., but that's coming to a change as we head in towards the weekend and early next week. So we've got a chance for rain coming in. And here is how this is going to play out. Once we get to Sunday evening, we're going to have some rain off to our southwest. So there's the rain. As we go through Monday, it moves right across the state. So there it is. You can see 6 o'clock Monday morning. It does look like we will see some rain in Norman. Comes across the state. Unfortunately, it's a quick hitter. It moves very, very fast, and so we won't see a lot of rain, but it is going to be a little bit of rain. So definitely going to be a lot as we head into for Monday. Now, for the two-day forecast, a few clouds for Friday and warm. As we get into Saturday, we do see some more clouds because it the system starts to get closer. It stays warm, though. We reach the 70s by the time we get to Sunday, and a good chance for rain on Monday as the system moves through again on Sunday. It's mainly for western Oklahoma. And then on Tuesday, it's mainly for eastern Oklahoma. For Norman, we're looking at for Monday. That's when we'll see the rain. And then it warms up. Wow. It stays warm and dry. Man, I'm I bummed that there's going to be a little bit of rain. I was enjoying this nice weather. <laughs> there you we go. Knew it Enjoy that weather for now. Long. And it'll be fine. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you, Jordan. It's been a big week for basketball in Oklahoma. Holden, what else do you have for us? That's right, Colin. It has been a big week indeed. We'll have more on Trey Young's signing. And last night, the Thunder looked to right the ship before the All-Star break. Sports is straight ahead. In the end, I came to a place of peace 
and everything came together for me. And that place of peace for me in the fall of 2017 will be at the University of Oklahoma. As we talked about earlier today, it was a big day for Oklahoma basketball. You just watched Trey Young's announcement from earlier where he chose to attend OU in the fall. Young is OU's biggest recruit since the Sooners grabbed the Oklahoma City product that was Blake Griffin. With Jordan Wooder graduating, Young figures to slot in as OU's starting point guard next season. Playing along with Young Guns, Cam McGusty, and Christian Doolittle, the Sooners are now early favorites to compete for a Big 12 title next season. The playing style really fit, fit well. Um, and with them being young, I feel like I can come in and with them being with a year or two experience in the Big 12, will uh, be able to help me just as much as I'll be able to help them. So it was really a, a perfect fit. But Trey just wanted to be the, be that guy that stayed home and hopefully made a difference. You know, nothing's guaranteed, and he's going to have to go, go to campus and get to work and learn from those older guys. But he definitely understands the impact it means to uh, stay home. And playing in Norman has served Trey well. The number 15 overall recruit and second-ranked point guard by ESPN has averaged over 44 points, six boards, and seven assists a game so far for Norman North. And once again, this is the highest profiled recruit of Long Kruger's six year career at OU. OU softball heads to Houston to take part in the Rawlings Classic. Fourth ranked Sooners play Incarnate Word tomorrow at 9 a.m., followed by Ole Miss at 2 in the afternoon. And unexpectedly, Sooner baseball opens up this weekend in Norman against Long Beach State. Teams agreed to move the series to Norman with expected heavy rains in Long Beach. And a big weekend looms for the Oklahoma men's tennis team. The 14th ranked Sooners head to Charlottesville, Virginia for the Indoor Tennis National Championships. OU boasts two top 30 players, Andrew Harris and Spencer Papa, along with those two making the 42nd doubles team. The Sooners will take on number three Ohio State tomorrow at 8 a.m. Central Time. Coming off a blowout loss against the Wizards, the Thunder were back at home taking on the New York Knicks. Carlomelo Anthony took over early, making his first seven shots, knocking down a couple threes. But per usual, Russell Westbrook stole the show. Here he is throwing a pass to Andre Roberson for the slam. Another Russ triple-double, 38 points, 14 boards, and 12 assists. Thunder win going into the All-Star break, 116-105. to and the stakes were high for Rumor the German Shepherd yesterday at the Westminster Dog, Ch Dog Show in Madison Square Garden. Rumor the one best in show and celebrated in true New York fashion, getting a nice steak dinner and a photo shoot atop the Empire State Building. It was also the first time a German Shepherd has won the event in 20 years. And guys, rumor gets treated a lot better than I get treated. That's, That's what, what I was thinking. I I've was never like, had I anything like be, that. Like mm -hmm. spoiled like that. <laughs> For yeah. sure. It's always a great day when you have pups on the newscast. Thanks, mm -hmm. Holden. Still hit on OU nightly. Mother Nature paints a pretty picture. Stay with us. I'm Sydney Forsey at the OU Nightly Update Desk with the latest on Todd Lamb. The state lieutenant governor announced he is resigning as the small business advocate in Governor Mary Fallon's cabinet. Lamb disagreed with Fallon's proposed tax on the service industry, which he claims would devastate small businesses. Also, OU announced today that they have broken a new personal record. The freshman retention rate is almost 97%, an all-time high for the university. That's it for now. Back to you guys in the studio. Thank you, Sydney. And finally tonight, a visual treat from out west. Once a year when the conditions are just right, Mother Nature puts on a light show at Yosemite National Park. Called the Firefall, spectators gather to watch as the setting sun hits horsetails fall at just the right angle, illuminating it into a golden glow for about 10 minutes. Now, a lot of things have to be just right in order for this to happen, such as the water temperature and a clear sky. That is about as cool as it gets. That's a beautiful picture. That's what I'm saying. I've been to Yosemite, but I wish I would have been there for those 10 minutes. Right? I wish I could have seen it. <laughs> you want to go see that 10 minutes, not everything else you saw. Right, of course. <laughs> Jordan, can you give us a look at what our weather is going to look like? Yes, yeah, so again, one last look at the seven-day forecast. And it's going to be nice for the next few days. Get out and enjoy it. Again, a slight chance for rain, a good chance for rain, actually, on Monday. And then it starts to warm up. But just beyond that, there could be a cold snap. But we'll wait till we get to that. For now, enjoy the warm weather and the sunny skies. 
Wow, I will for sure be spending my days outside <laughs> for the next definitely going to have to start appreciating this warm weather. <laughs> Oh, well, thank you for watching OU Nightly, brought to you by the Gaylord College of Journalism and Mass Communication on the campus of the University of Oklahoma. We'll see you back here tomorrow night, live at 4.30. Have a great evening. Good night.